All right, everybody, back with a brand new Cabral Concept, episode 3168 of the show. We're going to be talking about, is there such a thing as protein overload? So it's really interesting when you start to look at a lot of lab testing and understanding people's constitutions, how well they break protein down, and then other factors that actually may lead to health issues if they consume too much. Now, of course, I do want to say that I'm a proponent of protein, I'm a proponent of carbs, fats, and protein in a person's diet. You just want to find the right amount for you. But what I will say is this, is that some people, when we run a candida metabolic and vitamins test, also called organic acids test, it's been around for decades. It's really the gold standard. Around 70 markers or so on everything from gut health to mitochondria to neurotransmitters to ketones to vitamin levels. It's a phenomenal test. And simple urine test, any age is three years up and uh, can run this. So three years old and up. Now, what I will say is this, is that it doesn't show up often. But some people, and so this will hopefully help practitioners out there as well, and those people running this lab on their own, that when a specific marker called ammonia is elevated, it can actually show up as symptoms that people are often dismissing. And I want to go over that here today and then, of course, allude to the biggest reason we see for ammonia being elevated is gut and protein, and I want to break that down for you. So if you're dealing with any symptoms, and these are some odd symptoms, things like disorientation, memory loss, mood changes, brain fog, lethargy, sometimes like muscle weakness where it like it's hard to like make a grip with your fists. Sometimes just like, I know, again, I know it's strange, but sometimes you'll just start to slur your words a little bit. It's not like you have dementia or Parkinson's or anything. It's just sometimes grabbing the words can be a little bit challenging. Sometimes you feel a little nauseous or sick to your stomach, but it's not H. pylori or anything like that. Oftentimes you might have a little shortness of breath. You're in normal shape, good shape, you know, just regular shape, but you get to the top of just a, a flight of stairs and also you're huffing and puffing. You know, why is that? So these are the things that I sometimes cause, cause, you know, some strange symptoms that you can't always pin down to what it may be. And it's those people that we love to run the big five with, or at least the vitamin tox test. The vitamin tox test looks at your heavy metals, which is important. I'm going to talk about that in a moment, as well as your mineral levels and the candida metabolic and vitamins test runs all the things that we just spoke about, gut health, vitamin levels, et cetera, and it looks at ammonia. So when we look at that and we start to hear about these specific symptoms, and we see that elevation in ammonia, this is an important one for us because there are only so many reasons why ammonia would be elevated. And one of the biggest ones, I'm not going to give you all of them, but basically there's something called the urea cycle. And when you consume a lot of protein, or specifically protein high in arginine, a lot of, let's call it red meats, eggs, um, organ meats, things that have been, kind of been promoted for a while now. And again, I'm not even saying that they're bad, but people are maybe eating more of them than they ever have. It's, it's important to look at that. And so when we look at this in a clinical practice, and we're looking at the, the larger amount of animal-based protein consumption. Again, I'm not against this. I always have to say that because people say, you're just against animal protein. I'm not. I eat animal protein on, on a daily basis. Um, it does digest differently, right? So there is a higher amount of ammonia produced. Now, in your average individual, a person can just take all of those different proteins, break them down, cycle through in the liver, first the intestines, then the liver, and move through that urea cycle, but with no problem. But if there's any type of liver detox issues, liver congestion, or there's an overgrowth in certain bacteria or potentially yeast in the gut that allows for more fermentation, we can get these elevated levels of ammonia. So we automatically go after two things if we see elevated ammonia. Now, if the person comes in and says, well, I have liver and kidney issues, totally different story. Then they're not able to break down a normal amount of protein. We can talk about what normal is if, if you want in a moment. But that, that's, that is due to hepatic issues or liver-based issues. Totally get that. But the other main reasons is inability to process that large amount of animal-based protein and or 
gut imbalances like bacterial overgrowth. So on the candida metabolic and vitamins test, we'll also see if there's yeast over, overgrowth is on there or clostridia bacteria. So if we see clostridia bacteria and we see yeast overgrowth, we may be able to assess that, oh, the ammonia is coming from that. But if we don't see those elevated and we see ammonia elevated, it could likely be that a person is not breaking down these animal proteins well. Now, what I would also say is this, is we can do challenges with people because it can be gut and protein, which oftentimes it is. Low stomach acid, bacterial overgrowth, yeast overgrowth, and they're, they're just not doing well overall, right? So what we look at is, let's get an assessment of how you feel after you have you know, a steak or eggs or dark meat chicken or, you know, name the thing, right? Like higher in, let's call it arginine or higher in urea for back of, uh, lack of a better word. And they'll say, yeah, it is after those meals that I might feel the most sluggish, the most brain fog, the most, et cetera, et cetera. And that is something that we look for. Now, this can be overcome. It really can be. People have a propensity towards it through genetics, but it doesn't mean that they can eat animal protein in the future. It's just one of the reasons why people might be shying away from it for whatever reason. So we'll do the CBO protocol for the gut. All of the things, so the candida metabolic and vitamins test or the minerals and metals test, both of those combined are called the starter kit or the vitamin tox test. Um, the CBO protocol for the gut, all of these things are at stephencabral.com slash shop. That takes you over to Equal Life. Again, you don't need to purchase anything. You can just see what we do and you can work with an integrative health practitioner. You can work with an Equal Life coach. You can work with whoever you want, but I just want you to know that the information is there. And then what I want to say is that you don't need to essentially limit your protein because there are detrimental effects to your immune system, to your recovery, to your sleep, to your blood sugar if you take your protein levels too low. So we don't want to do that. All right, so let's establish at least, and I've talked about this in other shows, but like what's too low for protein? Too low for protein would essentially be anything lower than 0.8 grams per kilogram of body weight, okay? So what that means is a little less than half your body weight in protein per day, right? In terms of kilograms. So let's just say a person weighs um, 160-ish pounds, they're going to be somewhere around 72 kilos. Okay. So that means then 0.8 of 72, I don't have the calculator in front of me. It's going to be like 60 something grams of protein, right? So that's the bare minimum for that individual. I would say that most individuals, the minimum, no matter what size you are, 50 to 60 grams of protein a day. And that's on the lower side. So I get it. I say for most people, because you want to keep the math really simple. It's about a gram one gram per kilogram, or about half your body weight in protein per day. That's basically your minimum. So if you weigh 160 pounds, about 80 grams per day. 72 kilos, about 70, you know, 165. Yeah, that's 80, 82. And that's about 76 kilos or so. So it's really close. It's close. And so we're just giving estimates. Then if you weight train and you're more active and you're breaking down your muscle tissue, you're on your feet more, you're going to need more protein. If you're not as active and you're not breaking down your body, you don't need probably a whole lot more protein. So for most people, it's going to be simply 0.5 to 1 times their body weight. Um, and then for kilos, it's basically a gram per kilo or double that, right? And so it's, it's really, it's fairly straightforward. And a lot of people like to go up towards the one for one with body weight. And that's simply because they're doing more body transformation. I could show you plenty of science that says probably not the best thing to do for longevity anti-aging. At least it hasn't been done yet. Like there's no long lived population that if you weighed 200 pounds, you ate 200 grams of protein per day. There just, it doesn't exist yet. Maybe in the future it will, but I'm just, again, sharing the science with you. Doesn't show that. Probably err more on the lower side, not too low. I don't want you to think that, but on the lower side, not more than about 20%. And I have plenty of podcasts on that, not more than about 20% of your macros, but I'm not going to get into that you know, here today. So now how could you keep your protein up if you do have high ammonia and a lot of these symptoms, or you do a challenge and you get them after that type of meal? First of all, we do need to fix the gut. But in the meantime, we can be doing a combination of plant-based proteins and then some animal proteins that are actually lower 
on the saturated fat side. Now, again, I'm not saying that saturated fat is a bad thing uh, or high, lower on the purines. So basically be like white meat chicken, white meat turkey. I'm not a huge proponent of just doing egg whites, but again, less of than this ammonia-based production. It could be some things like cottage cheese, a little bit lower. Um, again, I'm not the biggest proponent of cow's milk dairy, but you could do those types of things. Then you could add beans and legumes or dal or lentils or other uh, plant-based protein powders, those types of things you can do too, especially while you're doing something like the CBO protocol. And then over time, you start to add back in those proteins, which you didn't feel well from, from a higher uh, movement of urea to ammonia that built up in your body, leading to essentially this gas that feels like it's poisoning you, your brain fog, you've got fatigue, your disorientation, accelerated heart rate or breathlessness upon doing a flight of stairs. So my goal is to help the people out there, even if they're part of that small percentage that shows up high in ammonia. So if you want to check for yourself, I can't recommend enough writing the, running the vitamin tox test. Small ham sample, small urine sample, you get all your vitamins, you get all your minerals, you've got your heavy metals, which is one more reason for high ammonia, but not the main reason that, that we just talked about here today. And then you get your gut function as well. So vitamin levels, mineral levels, gut function, heavy metals. You can find that at stephencabral.com slash starter dash kit. We can link that up for you. We'll link it up at stephencabral.com slash 3168. And as I said, protein is not the enemy here. Finding the right amount for you is the sweet spot. And then not only that, finding the level of plant-based protein to animal-based protein that works for your body, your digestion at this moment in time. And then in the future, six months from now, you do the CBO protocol, you've done the CBO finisher, gut's in good shape, you may be able to start adding in more and more in terms of total quantity as well as quality from animal-based protein. So hopefully today's show was helpful. I'll link it up again, all the show notes at stephencabral.com slash 3168. Have an amazing day. Talk with you again tomorrow on the Cabral Concept. Thanks so much for tuning into today's show. Before you go, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I want to make sure that you're getting our daily content, not missing out on anything. Functional medicine, wellness, weight gain, weight loss, anti-aging, living longer, stronger, and all of the most cutting edge research. And if there's any topics you want to hear, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Take care.